We made uh, two great albums before this one and uh, uh, wanted it to be s as good as possible. I wanted to continue on with the, uh, the Fire King and the previous record as well, Inverted Cross, and uh, kind of blend in my influences as well. I was uh, hoping to achieve some um, variety when it comes to the writing of the songs, um, which I think we succeeded quite good with. World domination. <laughs> We struggled a little bit in the beginning with the songwriting, but when the songs came together, it was uh, apparent that they would be great songs. So, uh, yeah, uh, a bit anxious in the beginning, but uh, as time went on, uh, I'm not anxious anymore. No? We have a, a, a way of working, so uh, it's. Uh, it's business as usual, really, for, for, for me and uh, Connie. And uh, uh, we throw things around and surprise the guys in the band with new, new uh, edited versions of the original songs. So, yeah. All right, guys. Um, we're going to check out some uh, demos uh, now. And um, these first two are just like, you know, because if you're a non musician, you might wonder how people that are musicians, you know, how we can remember, how we come up with riffs and how we can remember them and stuff like that, you know. And uh, for me, and for many, I mean, we always have our mobile phones, which has a voice recorder. Uh, and it's a good thing to just, you know, uh, if you come up with a riff, record it. And uh, it can sound very embarrassing. Um, this was me out shopping with my daughter. Uh, and then I got a quick idea. It sounds like this. Ni idé. Yeah, that's my daughter asking, why are you singing into the phone? Can want some F E it work Why are you singing into the phone, Dad? Because that's a psycho. Uh, anyway, uh, that uh, turned out to be the uh, verse riff in the Lamenting of the Innocent, the title track. The version on the album sounds like this. The darkness comes without a warning. We stand our ground and we never shall back down. All right, here's another one. It sounds like this. Equally embarrassing, I might add. Here I am trying to explain to myself how the drums should go so I don't forget it, you know. I had this specific idea. Yeah, a little bit different than it ended up on the record, uh, but you know, the idea was there, and uh, on the record it sounds like this. Well, first of all, I thought uh, I was going to spend a lot of time rehearsing for this album, put a lot of thought into the drum parts, etc. But uh, eventually it ended up with a lot of improvising in the studio um, due to basically life in general with work and stuff like that. So 
Um, sometimes I reckon improvisation can actually be better because uh, you don't overthink it or anything, you just go with the flow. So, yeah, that was basically it. It wasn't that much thought. Some of the songs, there is a lot of thought behind. Uh, um, maybe you can hear that, but yeah, that's basically it. We, we, we wrote actually the melodies before we even wrote any lyrics, and that's, uh, we haven't done that before. That's actually something new. Um, when me and Johnny write songs, um, you know, he usually comes up with an idea uh, in a pretty basic form and then it's up to me or Peter. Um, in this case it's me um, to try to flesh it out and, and realize what he was thinking. And uh, check out this one. Complete with the uh, crow, uh, the bird in the beginning, also f <laughs> which is featured in uh, uh, Crowning with the Fire King, just as a joke. So as you can tell, the demos are pretty uh, pretty raw uh, in the beginning, uh, but then it's going to sound like this. quite frequently uh, record stuff, riffs and ideas for songs, like uh, many people do, and then I try to uh, go through some of them and it's easy to come up with ideas and riffs and stuff, but um, uh, put them together, make actual songs, which is the, the difficult part. It's always fun to write new stuff. Maybe I don't, I don't look into the old stuff as much and try to write some new stuff that feels kind of fresh. So. It's an ongoing process, but uh, when we start to uh, started to get closer to like when the songs had to be done, then of course you sit down and try to make arrangements and finish the actual song. All right, last example. Um, this is another one of Johnny's um, early demos. This is uh, the working title was Beyond All, but uh, on the record it's called something different. See if you can recognize this one. This is all Peter, by the way, who uh, took this one and just ran with it. Uh, sounds like this. got a acoustic guitar playing genius in the band by the name of Peter it can sound like this At some point we, we wrote uh, the Hammer Witches song and, and that song somehow 
put us on this track that we wanted to do. Uh, the idea came up that we wanted to do something conceptual. It uh, revolves around uh, the time of witch hunts and burnings uh, and, and uh, the Malium Maleficarum, the, the, the hammer of witches. So um, every song stands alone on its own, but they are also connected. The writing process was actually quite fun because uh, we got to demo everything at home. Uh, so we got to write everything ourselves, basically. So when I wrote a song, I could write the drums, the guitar and the bass. And I'm not necessarily a great guitar player, but you could still hear what I was trying to achieve. And uh, yeah, and then we would send them around to each other and it was kind of free, uh, you know, free musically. Nothing was bad, it was just we picked our favorite ones and went with it. And writing lyrics with Anders was also fun. This context or this theme in the, on the record is something that I enjoy. So uh, definitely a, a fun experience. So this is the first day of recording the new Sorcerer album. And uh, we're heading to the studio right now, where uh, Ricky is going to start recording drums. We First day of recording. Yeah. Hello, Ricky. <laughs> hey. Mike. <laughs> okay, the first yeah. day in the studio, Mike here, Simon, Ricky, Ronnie, Hello, man. Yeah, cool. hey. rigging the drums in this beautiful new studio. Oh, those cables, those cables, huh? Oh, those cables. We need wireless everywhere. I always think uh, I really don't want to interfere with the big parts as in if the vocals are there. Um, I usually think if, if there is a fill or anything, like a big fill or anything, I just try to make sure that it's not going to go uh, interfere with the, the, the singing. If the, if the song, like a faster song, uh, like Witch, um, well, that's the short version of the title. <laughs> um, I guess it, it's just how I feel for the song. It's a, it's a more aggressive song and that, therefore I play more aggressively. I'm very much uh, controlled by my feelings. <laughs> So what are you, uh, what are you using? Uh, it's a Matrix Raven kit, limited edition. You can't get a hold of these ones anymore. As far as rack racks, uh, I'm using a 10 inch and a 12 inch rack tone. And on the floor, on the right side, I have a 16 inch. And uh, on the left side, I have a 14 inch. And the snare drum is a uh, 14 inch by Six, I think. I'm using a 15 inch Hyatt. Uh, I got a signature crash here, 18 inch, uh, Pace 2002, 18 inch, and a Pace 2002, 19 inch. And a Pace the China signature series, and I believe that's a 18 inch, yes. The ride is a 20 inch ride, signature series. And uh, yeah, that's about it. As right. a double pedal, I'm using the 
Speed Cobra. The sticks I'm using is Big Firth. Absolutely my favorite drumstick company. They've been taking care of me since 2004 and they're just awesome. The guys at Big Firth. Nice. So here you go with the band logo Ooh, and my sweet. amazing signature that I managed to finish after half hours of tries. <laughs> and uh, it's a 2B. Uh, as far as drum heads, Evans all over the kit except on the bass drum that's a remo it's called the first chair so i guess that means i'm in the lead yeah <laughs> nice uh yeah and and of course the most important thing tobacco oh very strong oh very yeah strong. it makes your lips uh, tremble <laughs> <laughs> and this one oh, my coffee coffee yes yeah how strong is your coffee ricky it is Stronger than your feelings. For My feelings for you. Uh, they're pretty strong. No, in general, your feelings for me, I know they're very strong. And uh, likewise, they're uh, very strong. But okay. we keep it on a platonic yes. level, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that what you eat to play so fast? Yes, yes. <laughs> Peter, you have some beers. I have some uh, Sona Sound production beer. Amazing. Really good. Oh, and Simon's beautiful head on it. Like I always mention this guy, and it's since I heard him the first time, it's, it's Dean Castronovo. Uh, obviously, there is so much good drummers out there nowadays, and I can't really pick a favorite now. And if it was one I would pick, uh, it wouldn't be uh, in the same genre. It would be Jojo Mayer because of his excellent playing. Like. Fantastic technique, fantastic musicality, but uh, I, my all-time favorite is Dean Castronovo. You got Tommy Aldridge and stuff like that, but Dean Castronovo is, you should listen to um, Wild Dogs, Reign of Terror with Dean. It's the best metal album when it comes to drumming ever. album here but that was on a different location uh, this is actually uh, version 2 of the studio it's newly built we spent like all all of last year building this uh, it's a bit bigger than the other one and uh, it's kind of like done for real this time I, I actually used a, a real acoustic uh, guy to design the studio one of the most famous ones in the world or at least in Sweden Ingmar Olsson he's been around for 50 years yeah that guy's a legend yeah, he's done like ABBA studios and everything in Sweden and, and abroad as well. So, What kind of system are you uh, running? Uh, I'm, I'm using Pro Tools HD, uh, HDX. Yep. Uh, it's an old controller from Avid called uh, uh, D-Control, their biggest one, which is more like a glorified mouse, <laughs> to be honest, but it's uh, quite a convenient way to work. This is going to be more shit in here later, but it's uh, like an API over here. Oh yeah. And these are from an American company that uh, it's called uh, Copy, which do like uh, clones of ah, okay. API. We have a lot of amps here and we have uh, yep. a lot of... Uh, yeah, the amp. That is just uh, a part of it. Yeah, saw some yeah. Uh, like five more outside. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's cool. like, it's fun. Yeah. I used to collect guitars, but now it's funner to collect amps. The big, uh, the big studio room, studio room uh, yep. for drums and whatever, of course, you can do yeah. pretty much everything, of course. And I have two smaller isolation booths. And besides this, we have a you know a lounge area, kitchen, 
everything if, if, if people want to just relax because uh, you cannot play metal all the time if you're weak. Yes, I do. I, I think it's very, very cool. Um, I was happy when the guys asked me to to join again. So I remember when we recorded the uh, the demo where the the song "The Sorcerer" is on. It was on 16 tracks. So we recorded at, at, at this place in called uh, Studio Sexton, and. Uh, Actually, it's kind of a, a tra tragic event because uh, just one month before that album, my dad pa passed away. Just a, a week before the recording, I was all messed up because of that. And um, a week before that recording, I, I went to a show with, I have to sh share this one. And uh, uh, I had some uh, drinks before that show. It was uh, Judas Priest with Pantera and, and Annihilator. I missed Pantera and I missed Annihilator and it's still, I still feel that today. <laughs> uh, I was very drunk at that show and I fell over and someone stepped on my hand and uh, I basically got a, a fracture in my right hand. So I played on Painkillers and um, on that recording, <laughs> that's a weird memory. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, that's a, it actually, that recording is a very strong memory for me. I can go on and on about that one, but uh, yeah. Done with the drums, eh? Okay. God damn! Fuck yeah!